Well, the war in Syria is gearing up to some sort of a new phase. This phase, a new phase, is really getting more and more complicated. Turkey's invasion. The Assad regime used chemical weapons. Kurds are carving out their own statelet called Rojava. This is Rojava, a region in northern Syria that runs along the border of Turkey. It's home to over a million Kurds, one of the largest ethnic groups in the Middle East. Until a few years ago, this was a rural and forgotten corner of Syria, where the Kurds were denied legal status by the Syrian government. But today, Rojava is a self-governed region, with a powerful militia that led the fight against ISIS. And it's where the Middle East's youngest democracy is taking shape. Surrounded by Assad's totalitarian regime, the militant Islamic State, and a hostile neighbor, Turkey, this is an unlikely place for a democratic revolution. But it was actually the Syrian war that made Rojava a possibility in the first place. In 2011, protests against dictator Bashar al-Assad erupted in Syria. The uprising turned into open rebellions after he sent his army to crack down on the opposition. With battles on multiple fronts and forces stretched thin, he had to make a choice. By July 2012, Assad pulled most of his army out of the traditional Kurdish territories in northern Syria to defend these major cities in the west. The move created a void, but not for long. An existing Kurdish political party called the Democratic Union Party stepped up to defend and govern the region they called Rojava. They organized it into these three small self-governed states. They set up a democratic system of local governments and claimed they would protect the rights of all citizens, including the multiple ethnic groups within the region. They also promoted gender equality across all public institutions, including their military. An all-woman military group called the YPJ took shape and fought alongside the Kurdish militia called the YPG. But just as Rojava started taking shape, it came under attack. The jihadist militia known as ISIS. Terrorist group ISIS gaining ground in Syria and Iraq right now. In 2014, the Islamic State swept through Syria. In Rojava, they drove all the way to Kobani on the Kurdish border and laid siege to the city. Trapped inside were thousands of civilians and Kurdish militia fighters. As ISIS threatened to take the city, small pockets of Kurdish fighters held their ground until reinforcements arrived. The U.S. provided air support for the Kurds, and together they retook Kobani, marking a major moment for Rojava. The Kurdish fighters proved to be one of the most effective forces in Syria, leading to continued U.S. air support and eventually weapons. The victory also gave Syrian Kurds, who were denied statehood for decades, an opportunity to strengthen and expand their territory. With Assad still fighting in the west, the Kurds decided to take on ISIS. The Kurds are the most effective fighting force against the Islamic State. Kurdish fighters in Syria have made significant gains. Killing thousands of fighters and clawing back territory. A Kurdish-led force launched an offensive today in Syria. Pushing ISIS further and further back. Out of their territory in the northeastern city of Hosaka. We are now within sight of the ISIS stronghold of Raqqa. As Kurdish fighters started liberating these cities, they incorporated their populations into Rojava. With the addition of multi-ethnic populations, Rojava was renamed the Democratic Federation of Northern Syria to reflect the makeup of the region. And Kurdish fighters merged with non-Kurdish militias to form the Syrian Democratic Forces, also known as the SDF. Western media hailed the moment as the birth of a young democracy in the Middle East. And the Kurds promoted their democratic model as a solution for a post-war Syria. But reports also claim that the Kurds displaced non-Kurdish populations and committed human rights abuses. In the broader region, not everyone supported the Kurdish project. On one hand, the Syrian government denied its existence. And on the other, Turkey grew worried as Rojava expanded. See, Turkey claims the Kurds in Rojava are a front for the PKK, a Kurdish militant group that's been at war with them since the 1980s, and is labeled a terrorist group by the US and the EU. So to keep Rojava from becoming a safe haven for the Kurds, Turkey sent ground troops into Syria here in August 2016 to fight both ISIS and the SDF, eventually cutting off Afrin from the rest of the federation. But the Kurdish offensive continued, and in late 2017, it led to the fall of ISIS in its capital, Raqqa. The victory marked a big win for the Kurds, but it also opened up a major threat. 
In early 2018, Turkey went back into Afrin and launched Operation Olive Branch, a full ground offensive against the Syrian Kurds here. With ISIS gone, Rojava's partnerships had weakened. In the absence of a common enemy, the American motivation for backing the Kurdish fighters has declined, especially when they're up against Turkey, a NATO ally that the U.S. relies on. Now, it's unclear how far Turkey will go to keep Syrian Kurds in check, but without U.S. support, their forces are under-equipped and undermanned against Turkey's massive military. In this new phase of the Syrian war, Rojava has become a vulnerable target, and the Kurdish dream that was created by the start of the war is threatened by its end.